1934, Juan Corona was born as the ninth of ten children in a small town in western Mexico. His family was poor and at the age of just 16, he immigrated to California to work as a migrant farm labourer. At the age of just 19, he married his wife and the two would eventually have four children together. From the outside, he looked like a hard-working family man, but underneath the surface, he had some serious mental health issues. Corona suffered from schizophrenia, a mental condition which can cause hallucinations and prevent the patient from differentiating their delusions from reality. In 1955, there was a disastrous flood in the area that killed dozens of people. This traumatic event triggered various schizophrenic outbreaks and Juan thought the ghosts of the dead flood victims were haunting him. His half-brother, who had immigrated to California with him, admitted him to a mental hospital. At the hospital, he was given over 20 rounds of electrocompulsive therapy. This involves passing small amounts of electricity through the brain to intentionally cause a seizure. While its efficacy is questionable, it was a commonly used treatment for schizophrenia at the time. After three months, he was discharged and deported to Mexico as he lacked the documentation to work in the US. For six years, he lived in Mexico, and at 32, he secured a green card, enabling him to return to California legally. Once there, he continued his work as a farm labourer. As he became acquainted with the local farmers, he recognised a more lucrative opportunity as a labour agent rather than as a labourer. He sought out migrant workers, often connecting them at bars or social events. He'd arranged short-term employment for them at nearby farms, earning a commission for each placement. Through this venture, he interacted with hundreds of migrant workers. He owned a modest house on one of the farms where he worked, and this became a temporary home for the workers when they first arrived. In 1971, a California farm owner who worked with Corona noticed a freshly dug hole that was filled in the next day. He found it suspicious because there were no farming-related activities that would require digging such a hole. So, he dug up the hole and found the dead body of a man who had been stabbed to death. In the grave, he also found two bank deposit receipts with Juan Corona's name on them. Police almost immediately obtained a warrant to search Corona's home, where they found bloodstained knives, a machete, a handgun and bloodstained clothing. Most disturbing of all, they found a notebook with a list of handwritten names. It included 34 names and dates. Police were able to identify 25 dead bodies buried in nearby farms whose names matched those on the list. As it turns out, many of the migrant farm labourers he hired never made it to their first day of work. Wan would kill them when they arrived at his house and bury them in the nearby farmland. These were migrant workers who had few ties to the local community and nobody noticed their disappearance. Even people who knew them just assumed they had left town for a different job. This made Wan's victims almost invisible, with nobody noticing their disappearance. Upon his arrest, Corona was appointed a public defender. With the overwhelming amount of physical evidence found in his home, the attorney thought the only hope was an insanity defence. Given Wan's documented history of schizophrenia, this might have worked. But before the trial began, Wan's family was approached by a private defence attorney. He offered to represent Wan for free. But in return, he wanted exclusive rights to write a book about Wan's life story, including the trial. The case had garnered national news headlines and an exclusive biography would surely become a bestseller. This new attorney inexplicably abandoned the insanity defence and Wan was convicted on all 25 counts of murder. Wan appealed the decision on the grounds that his defence attorney was compromised, focusing more on the book deal than actually defending his client. At the second trial, his new defence team tried to pin the blame on his half-brother, who had fled to Mexico after being implicated in an unrelated crime. The jury didn't buy this story, and he was again convicted on all 25 murder charges and sentenced to life in prison. In 2011, after spending 40 years in prison, a 77-year-old Juan Corona finally confessed to all 25 murders at a parole hearing. His parole was denied. In 2019, he died in a California state prison at the age of 85.